is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Mr. Nigel Farage. Thank you, Donald, and good evening, everybody. I'm speaking to you from the European Parliament in Strasbourg, where tomorrow we have the EU equivalent of a royal visit. Yes, French President Emmanuel Macron is coming to the European Parliament tomorrow to address us, um, and I'll be there listening to what he has to say, and then we're on to a grand lunch at which he'll speak as well. But the news focus today, of course, is the UK Parliament, where Theresa May has been defending the decision overnight, Friday into Saturday, for those missile strikes to go in against selected targets in Syria, and, of course, uh, you know, British forces taking part in that. Eight of the 105 missiles came from us. And there were three big questions that had emerged, I think, over the weekend. You know, why had she decided to take the action on that particular evening? Um, was she simply becoming America's poodle and taking orders from President Trump? And why had Parliament not been recalled first to debate and vote on this? Let's listen to what she had to say to the House of Commons today. First, why did we not wait for the investigation from the OPCW? UNSC-mandated inspectors have investigated previous attacks and on four occasions decided that the regime was indeed responsible. We are confident in our own assessment that the Syrian regime was highly likely responsible for this attack and that its persistent pattern of behaviour meant that it was highly likely to continue using chemical weapons. Furthermore, there were clearly attempts to block any proper investigation, as we saw with the Russian veto at the UN earlier in the week. And let me set this out in detail. We support strongly the work of the OPCW fact-finding mission that is currently in Damascus. But that mission is only able to make an assessment of whether chemical weapons were used. Even if the OPCW team is able to visit Douma to gather information to make that assessment, and they are currently being prevented from doing so by the regime and the Russians, it cannot attribute responsibility. Second, were we not just following orders from America? Let me be absolutely clear. We have acted because it is in our national interest. To do so. It is in our national interest to prevent the further use of chemical weapons in Syria and to uphold and defend the global consensus that these weapons should not be used. For we cannot allow the use of chemical weapons to become normalised, either within Syria, on the streets of the UK or elsewhere. So we have not done this because President Trump asked us to do so. We have done it because we believed it was the right thing to do, and we are not alone. Third, why did we not recall Parliament? Mr Speaker, the speed with which we acted was essential in cooperating with our partners to alleviate further humanitarian suffering and to maintain the vital security of our operations. This was a limited, targeted strike on a legal basis that has been used before. And it was a decision which required the evaluation of intelligence and information, much of which was of a nature that could not be shared with Parliament. We have always been clear that the government has the right to act quickly in the national interest. I am absolutely clear, Mr Speaker, that it is Parliament's responsibility to hold me to account for such decisions, and Parliament will do so. But it is my responsibility as Prime Minister to make these decisions, and I will make them. Well, there's the Prime Minister. Opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn had a very different response, and he was pushing the Prime Minister to defend the legal justification for her decisions, and Corbyn believed that she was following Donald Trump. Mr Speaker, this statement serves as a reminder that the Prime Minister is accountable to this Parliament, not to the whims of the US President. We clearly... We clearly need... We clearly need a War Powers Act in this country to transform a now broken convention into a legal obligation. Her predecessor came to this House to seek authority for military action in Libya and in Syria in 2015, and the House had a vote over Iraq in 2003. There is no more serious issue than the life and death matters of military action. It is right that Parliament has the power to support or stop the government from taking planned military action. 
So they're the arguments that were put to the House of Commons today. I'm asking you, are you now convinced that this attack was the right thing to do? And if you think, yeah, absolutely, we did it for all the right reasons, call me on 0345 6060 If you think, actually, there's still not enough justification or proof that it was Assad that was guilty of this, given that ISIS have these weapons too, then text to 84850 and tell me, have you changed your mind over the course of the last few days? And you can do that by tweeting using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. And I pose that third question because a Sky Data poll out this afternoon says that now 49% of people approve of the action whilst only 37% disapprove of the action. And that's a significant shift in position than you know, the initial response on Saturday morning or even in the days leading up to it. So maybe you've listened to the arguments that have been put by the Prime Minister, that have been put by the media. Um, I have to say, I have not changed my mind one little bit. Uh, when a Prime Minister tells us that it's highly likely that Assad did it, I think, hmm... Or well, we could do with a little bit more than that, couldn't we, really? And when she says we weren't following the Americans, I mean, pull the other one, it's got bells on it. It's, you know, is she suggesting that we'd have done this on our own? Of course we wouldn't have done so. Uh, and if the argument is uh, that we have to do this because we can't have chemical weapons being used on the streets of Salisbury or indeed in Syria, well, perhaps she wants to bomb Russia next. I don't know. I'm, I, I really am unconvinced by these arguments. And, and finally, when she says that it's in the national interest that we do this, well, I'm sorry. Uh, there may be some appalling things happening in Syria, but I do not buy at all into the fact that it's in our national interest. And what next, Prime Minister? What next? What if there is a chlorine gas attack in the next few days on a civilian area Will we once again assume that it is the Assad regime that's done it and fire off a load more missiles? If we do that, maybe what we'll do is to prolong the length of this war, a war that Assad is going to win anyway. Folks, I'm not convinced, but tell me I'm wrong. Robin in Whitehaven is my first caller. Robin, good evening. Good evening, Nigel. Um, I can't believe I'm going to say this, Nigel, but I think I agree with everything you've just said. Um, right, OK. <laughs> Uh, has, has that come as a horror? Has that come, Robert, as a terrible shock to you to have to agree with me? No, no, I agree on some things you do actually say. I, I credit where credit's due. Um, um, Theresa May is no one's questioning whether or not there should be international condemnation and action to stop gas attacks. It's the vilest of vile. That's what my opinion is. But there's no explanation whatsoever of why Theresa May didn't come to the House of Parliament. Mr. Trump had been tweeting what he was going to do. You yes. know what I mean? So for her to say it had to be done with, to protect our service people is a, a lot of nonsense. I think what lies at the heart of this is Theresa May is looking how cosy Macron is getting to uh, Mr. Trump and she's getting a little bit jealous. So I really think we, should, we need an act in this country where unless we're attacked, ourselves or British service people are attacked, it should always come to the House of Parliament for a vote because it can be left wide open to any kind of speculation. Why did we not wait for the inspectors to go in? They were on the way, apparently. Why did we not wait? Um, well, I mean, I mean, the argument given is all they would have discovered was that it was a chemical attack and they couldn't have proved who'd done it, is the argument the Prime Minister gave. So you think Corbyn's right in a way that we do need a piece of legislation that says that the government can't take action unless we are or we feel to be directly threatened? I, I absolutely agree 100% with him. I'll give you an example totally not not connected to this, right? There was a... Bank of England took control of the interest rates, so we so the government can't manipulate them to make themselves look better or worse or anything like that. So for something where life and death is involved, Nigel, we need Act of Parliament that says it has to come to Parliament. And we're not talking about everything. If this country is attacked, we have to have the opportunity to defend ourselves. In yes, the, and that's in the England. and that's the royal prerogative, isn't it? That that is the government uh, that is able to act in our sovereign interests as they see it. And we wouldn't exactly. want to take that away. We, we would never want to take that away, Robin, would we? 
no one's suggesting take that away. No one, no one at all is suggesting take that away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think Theresa May has made this country more vulnerable now to any terrorist aftershock that might come our way. We see what happened in Libya, and we've seen what happened when we've got involved with other things. There's people getting killed in Saudi Arabia, and would seem to be the international. There's no, isn't any condemnation of Saudi well, Arabia. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes, I mean, I mean, I mean, there is this war in Yemen. Which of course the Saudis are involved oh, in. Sorry, where not te- Saudi Arabia, I mean Yemen, Yemen. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where terrible things have happened, and and as I say, Robin, you know, if she if she's convinced that the use of chemical weapons has to be fought back with force, why doesn't she bomb Russia for Salisbury? Well. But- but I can tell you exactly why. I think, I think we know the answer to that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Now, Robin, listen, you've made your point. You think legislation is needed and that, and that Corbyn may well be on the right track with this. Interesting. Um, I, you know, I, frankly, I've got no problem as such with the government be able to make their own decisions. But please don't pretend to me that this wasn't because of the Americans. I mean, that, frankly, I think is almost laughable. Cathy says the decision to go into Syria should be the decision of the people. We have to put up with the consequences. Tom says, if the attack had been a serious attempt to degrade Assad's chemical capability, the strike would have been during working hours to destroy the really critical human resource to scientists and technicians. It wasn't. It was showmanship and a total waste of our taxes. Well, perhaps it was virtue signalling, is, fr- is a phrase that we use quite a lot these days. Perhaps this was virtue bombing. And Henry on Twitter says, we cannot know for sure who did it, but the political and international fallout of not aligning ourselves with our closest allies would have been colossal. And that may very well, Henry, be true. You know, we may well want to be seen to be with the Americans and all of these things. And look, you know, I am a big, strong Trump supporter, anyone that listens to this show knows that, but I really am seriously questioning about this. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. The time is now 7.15. As Mrs May tells us, we got involved in the strikes on Friday night into Saturday morning because it was done for humanitarian reasons. We weren't just following the Americans. It was in our national interest too. I'm asking you whether you're convinced that we've done the right thing. A thought. Just a little thought here, that in the last 24 hours, the leaders of the Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church in Syria um, have made statements very critical of these strikes. Uh, They are very much on the side of the Assad regime. That's not necessarily uh, because as religious people, they think everything Assad has done is right. It's because they are terrified of the alternative. And the alternative is ISIS and the alternative are very, very extreme groups and the alternative is that Christians in Syria would literally be wiped out. In fact, their numbers have declined massively anyway. And I just wonder, you know, in a sense, are we now almost helping ISIS? I have lots of reservations about all of this. I accept if the Sky Data poll tells me that more of you are now convinced we've done the right thing, please tell me why. You know where I've got this wrong. Mazla says on Twitter, I agree with the strikes a thousand percent. For the first time, Mr Farage agrees with Jeremy Corbyn. Well, actually, Corbyn is criticising legality. He's criticising procedure. He's saying Parliament should be consulted. He's saying we need legislation to stop this from happening again. What Corbyn hasn't done, he hasn't actually come out and outright condemned the strikes. I think my position on this is a bit stronger actually, than Jeremy Corbyn's. Let's go to Brian, who's calling from Stockton. Good evening, Brian. Yes, good evening, Nigel. Good to talk to you. So, are you convinced? I don't agree with you at all on this, Nigel. I don't agree with you. I can't can't on this. I mean, you've lost a plot there, actually. Well, I'm not very keen... I'm not very keen, Brian, on repeated military actions and wars, none of which have worked in the last 15 years. It's not about the war. What it is about is it's about chemical warfare, using of chemicals... That is what it's about. We've tapped them on the hand for it, really, haven't we? We told them we were coming. Yeah. We, we've done something. And, and you saying it's not in the interest of a country, it is. Because you've just seen Salisbury happen. Mm-hmm. Now you've mm-hmm. seen this in Syria. And it's not just uh, civilians in the end, is it? You see, if you ever do get troops over there or anywhere in the world, and this, these chemicals are used on your own soldiers... It has to be nipped in the bud, Nigel. 
Well, what we do know, Brian, what we do know, going back a couple of years, is there were 52 occasions on which ISIS had used chemical weapons. Now, let's put ourselves, Brian, let's put you and me... Nigel, nobody wants to use them. No, no, but, but, but let's just put yourself in this position, Brian. Let's just say you and I, right, are right now in Syria, and we're part of the opposition. In fact, we're part of ISIS. What would our next step be, given that after these strikes... We've heard the Americans are locked and loaded. We've heard the British are prepared to intervene again if there's another use of no, no, chemical please, weapons. Please, you're, you're going too far into it. You're thinking too far into it. Look. It, it, what if, Brian, what if, Brian, ISIS, what, what, what if ISIS, Brian, launch a, cup, a couple of shells Nigel, containing chlorine? Yes. Why? Nigel, why would we want to get involved in that? Nigel, why are you still going about ISIS? Please. Because they have chemical weapons too, Brian, and we do not have Nigel, any Nigel. conclusive proof that Assad Nigel. did this. Nigel, you're taking things too far, to that. All it was about was making a stance on chemical war- warfare weapons. It wasn't making a stance on that. Forget everything else. Okay. Everybody's taking this too far. All right, so Brian, so Brian, if chemical weapons are used again in Syria this Thursday, should we respond again? We, well, we have to talk it over this time. We open it's been nipped in the bud. That was the, that was the, that was the idea of this, Nigel. But we put things in the bud. But, but Brian, but Brian, it. but Brian, Trump, without us and without the French, Trump last April sent sixty odd cruise missiles into sites in Syria. So we did it a year ago to nip it in the bud. We've now done it again. And I'm saying to you, Brian, what happens if chlorine is used again next Thursday? And it could very... If I was ISIS, I would make sure there was an outrage with chlorine oh, in... Nigel, you, please, you know, you, 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 you're getting me out of line on this now. I'm sorry. I normally agree with you, Nigel, on most things, Brexit, everything. But you, you're getting me out of line with this. You know... Well, I have, to, I, I, I have to tell you, Brian, you're, you're that isn't just... Conspira- you're putting conspiracy theories there now. Well, I tell you what, like- yesterday morning, yesterday morning, we had Lord West, Admiral Lord West, on the show, you know, former boss of the yeah, Royal I Navy, I respect... Up, and, and, and he I says, like, yeah. he says, as a military man, he says, if I was advising Assad, who's winning the war, the one thing I would absolutely tell him not to do is to use chemical weapons, See, and he also, again. and he also again. said, and he also said, he also said, we are now at risk, we've given a hostage to fortune, because if, if ISIS, who we know have chemical weapons, you know, fake an attack, Look. we will now be attacking Syria again, or Nigel. Assad again. Nigel, who knows what Assad and the Russians will ever do? You know, West, West said this about that, saying, why would he do it? We mm. don't know what they'll do, because they seem alone to themselves. That is the problem. We're going to have to see what happens in the future, aren't we? But I think you, everybody's phoning in and people talking about... I mean, they're about saying they never went to the Parliament. We've seen in Parliament today, you're going to have Labour trying to get at them, the Greens, the SNP. You know, it's hard to get things done, isn't it? We know Parliament's there for a good reason, but in certain cases, it doesn't do the job what you want to get done, does it? Well, yeah, that's, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, democracy has its flaws. Brian, can I just ask you one last question? Yeah, yeah. Are you, when Theresa May tells us that it's highly likely that Assad launched this attack, are you, are you yourself 100% convinced that it was Assad I that mean, used chlorine gas? It's 99.9%. All right, fine, Brian, no, no, you are convinced of it and you believe it's the right thing to do and you've argued it very, very passionately indeed. Helen says on Twitter, the words highly likely aren't a good enough argument to join America in military action against Syria. Also, in what way was it in the national interest? No one was threatening the UK. Well, Helen, I certainly couldn't have put that better myself. Hi, Nigel. I thought I would never agree with you, but I agree with your analysis. There is not a shred of independent evidence of whose chemical weapons are being used against Syrians. Bombing Syrians, again, is loopy. Very strong opinions on both sides of this. I wonder where Stephen in Putney fits on into all of this. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Farage. I, I simply don't understand your mischievous suggestion that maybe the uh, the people of um, of Duma uh, uh, were, were bombed by the jihadis. I've got a question for you. How come the Russians themselves 
who have actually got access to those places have not suggested this. If you recall, a few days ago, the Russian foreign ministry's line was that there was actually no chemical attack and that it was all faked by the British using the white helmets. Now well, suddenly, it's, it's, it's very difficult, Stephen. Attack, but it was actually done by the jihadis. It seems to me that when people tell lies, they've got something to cover up. No, it's very difficult to believe anything the Russians say, um, <laughs> or or even to take some of their press conferences too seriously. Um, Stephen, are you one of those who is a hundred percent convinced that Assad did this, and and that there's no doubt in your mind that ISIS could have done this? Look. Assad has already been found to have uh, used chemical weapons against his own people on he numerous has. occasions, and this has he been has. independently verified. The Prime yes. Minister has stated in Parliament today that um, intelligence that she's received, which clearly was enough to convince both the French President and the American President, that Assad was responsible again. I see no reason to disbelieve the Prime Minister making an assertion of that kind, especially when it seems to be believed by the French and the Americans. Well, and we had you... we had intelligence over Iraq, Stephen, didn't we, which proved not to be uh, perhaps quite as accurate yeah. as it was first portrayed. I mean, Stephen, I just think this, right? I just think this. I just think we have now in the West, uh, and it's been with us for 15 years or more, that it seems that taking military action is something that we do really rather lightly. Um, in the past, it was something that we considered a very serious thing to do. We now think taking military action is the right thing to do. And I'll be honest, Stephen, you know, I'll lay my cards on the table. I've been against all these interventions. And I now look back at our track record in Libya and elsewhere, and I think we've got very little right over the last 15 years. What is to make me believe we've got this right? Well, uh, look, it was a very limited action. Its purpose was only to destroy chemical facilities, and hopefully that has happened. Nobody got killed. There were three injuries at most. <clears throat> So yep. compared to some of our interventions, say, in Iraq, this was very, very small scale. It's not true that all our interventions are universally wrong. For example, the intervention in Sierra Leone was successful. Even the intervention in uh, Yugoslavia was successful. Sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong. Well, I was, I was being very specific about the Middle East, uh, Stephen. I'm not sure, you know, it seems to be we're trying to pick good guys and bad guys. You know, Cameron's government did this in 2013. A sad bad guy, the rebels are the good guys let's arm the rebels let's fund the rebels thank goodness parliament voted that down otherwise we actually would have backed isis wouldn't we well yes i mean in this particular case as somebody said the other day it's a choice between a monster assad and lunatics namely the mm. uh, the, the, the jihadis nevertheless i do think that we ought to make a stand against the use of chemical weapons i think as theresa may said we can't allow this to be normalized because you can see how easy it would be for any dictator who wants to clear an area of weapons. yeah yeah, yeah. You know, no, no, that's the just, just gas them all that is the moral case for this piece of action but it's not part stephen of a long-term strategy we're being pushed around by events is my view but i thank you very much indeed for your call and for your passion and all of you you're listening to the nigel farage show it's now 7 30. well snap polling tells us that more of you are becoming convinced that the prime minister did the right thing going in with the americans and the french and launching those missile strikes on syrian government targets on Friday night into Saturday morning. I am not one of those. I believe it's knee-jerk uh, behaviour. And yes, whilst there may be a moral case against chemical weapons, if it's not part of a strategy, then I think intervention could make things worse, not better. We could finish up seeing even more distressing scenes than the children we saw on our screens just over a week ago. But before we get back to that, uh, Donald Trump today was addressing a crowd at the USA Open for Business conference where he introduced the crowd to his newly appointed National Security Advisor, John Bolton. And I think the President was a bit surprised by the reaction. That's right. And very important, and by the way, John Bolton is here, and we just had a big, <laughs> successful hit, John. So I think...
Hey, John, that's pretty good. I didn't expect that. I'm a little jealous. Are you giving him all the credit? That's... Uh oh, you know, that means the end of his job, you know. <laughs> All I can say, just nice to see a bit of humour from our political leaders. We need more of it. Uh, Trump says Bolton's out because he's too popular. Doesn't mean it, of course, but just nice to see just a bit of fun and humour from our leaders, um, particularly at a time when we've taken on such very, very serious action as intervening once again. And I say once again because, of course, last April... Don't forget, last April, America, in response to chemical weapons usage, America, of course, did send in about 60 cruise missiles, believing that was the end of it. And here we are, a year on, doing the same thing again. I am still, myself, not wholly convinced that Assad was responsible for this. And I go along with Admiral Lord West. You know, if I was ISIS right now, I would make sure... There was a chlorine gas outrage somewhere because I'd know that America, Britain and France would hit back again at the Assad regime. Do you know, the effect of all of this is we could be lengthening the war if we intervene again. And to what end? Even more people will die. I don't think we've thought any of this through. Tommy says, what happens to the 13% Shia Muslim population and the 12% Christian population if the Bashar al-Assad regime falls and the rebels take over. There is no long-term plan whatsoever. May is utterly wrong. Well, I, I think, Tommy, what we can say without doubt is for the Christians that are left, it would be a complete and utter catastrophe. Joe is calling from Lowestoft. Good evening, Joe. Good evening, Nigel. I, I, I just... I actually um, reluctantly agree that we have to stand up and uh, say that uh, the use of chemical weapons is totally unacceptable. Um, yeah. but, the, 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 but the main thing that bothers me about, uh, yet again, this government, this uh, excuse for a government we've got, uh, they just try and subvert Parliament again. Every which way they turn, they, they, we, we, we're supposed to be having sovereignty brought back from Europe, given back to the Houses of Parliament mm -hmm. by these same people. And, and every, every time they, they can avoid, because of the threadbare um, majority they've got, because of, of, they only blame one person, Theresa May. She can only blame herself. But because she's got such a threadbare majority, every time that something serious comes up, she tries to, she, she'll do anything to avoid going to Parliament. And it, they're not, we're not bringing back sovereignty back from Europe to the House of Parliament. It's coming back. It will come back to that the executive. Yeah. yeah, well, well, if it comes back to the executive, we can, of course, sack the executive by changing our MPs and, and government effectively at the next election, Joe. Um, so you think, I mean, look, she could, could she not, have recalled Parliament on Friday and had a debate. You think she should have done that, yeah? I, th I think she should have done that. And, and uh, th this is how far this government goes to avoid going to Parliament. When, th when they're facing a vote that they know they, that they think they might lose, they're so frit that they all, all en masse, abstain. Which I, I think is an affront to democracy. People vote these people in just to sit there and be ordered to abstain. So do you think, Joe, that Jeremy Corbyn may be right that perhaps we need to have a War Powers Act to make sure government can't do this in the future. I don't, it's one of the one things I would agree with him on. Um, OK, no, fine. No, fine. Joe, fine. You made your point. Fine. Um, I actually have less problem with the government taking executive decisions, um, it, but, but I just think it's the wrong decision. James is calling from Romford. Good evening, James. Good evening, Nigel. Yes, I agree with you, and it pains me to say I agree with Jeremy Corbyn. Blimey. Mm. Um, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely ludicrous that people have drunk the BBC's Kool-Aid with this. Everyone... He, uh, Assad was winning. He, he was getting rid of ISIS. He was winning. Why the, in God's name would he do this? Why? Well, one argument, James, James, sense. James, I agree with you. The argument that gets put is that by doing this, you know, he spreads fear and terror into the last remaining enclaves, and therefore he wraps up the war more quickly. That's the argument the other side make, James. Oh, that's ridiculous. I mean, look, 
it's got nothing to do with uh, Iran not using the dollar anymore, is it? <clears throat> or the fact, look, let's just, let's just uh, cut the proverbial here. General Wesley Clark, a former general in the American army, come out and basically, I know you know about this, has told everyone, and I suggested earlier to callers, look this up. The Project for the New American Century, it's called, which yep. is a document that they brought out. Uh, they was going to go into seven countries in as many years. And they listed all the countries out. And funny enough, all the countries have been hit, bar Iran, yeah. And Syria was on that list. Now, they, they also called it the Axis of Evil, if people remember. Oh, yes, absolutely. That was yes, a sort yes. of George so, W. Bush and they've phrase, told wasn't you it? They're go into the, they've told you they're going to go into these countries, and now they're doing it. And they're making up excuses, and they're letting off uh, false flags. Or, uh, I mean, there's another thing I've been uh, researching about. I'm looking at the photos and what's going on about this apparent gas attack. And you've got army British soldiers who are tweeting on and, and, and messaging, saying, if that was what it was supposed to be, the people standing next to them would be dead. Like uh, the, 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 the I don't know. And, and the equipment they're yeah. using to handle these dead people or supposedly injured people, they would be dead. So I don't know a, about that, big, James. Uh, well, I don't know about that. I suggest but everyone I, starts really doing some research and stop just watching BBC and reading The Sun. So, James, James, are you, are you in doubt when the Prime Minister says she's doing this in the national interest? absolutely in doubt, 110%. We are going to have, let's face it, a war with Russia and China and Iran, OK? This is what it's going to lead to. And so I suggest everybody does everything they can to halt this immediately and stop getting so gun ho because this ain't going to be the Second World War, OK? Well, You're not James, going to be able to go into your garden James, and hide James, I mean, they... They have, I mean, and, and I will defend the government if for one moment here, uh, they've done this in a very limited way. They've been very cautious, uh, but they will do it again. More limited strikes if chemical weapons are seen to be used again. And that's the bit that worries me. Thank you. John says, evening, Nigel. I agree with your initial analysis. Listeners need to consider this. If they targeted a facility that actually had chemical, chemical weapons in it, then I wonder how much would get released into the atmosphere. Like you, Nigel, highly likely doesn't do it for me. Um, Nigel, I mostly agree with you on many things, but I think you're trying to be mischievous on this subject. The Russians wouldn't even let the OPCW in to do their investigations. But look, I've said already on this show, the Russians are very highly untrustworthy in many things that they say. And it may well be, it may well be that Assad, with a very bad track record of barrel bombing, and yes, in the past, using chemical weapons and doing all sorts of horrible things in a very, very horrible, bloody civil war. It may be him that did it. It isn't very logical, but we do need to keep in mind that there are 52 occasions on which ISIS are known to have used chemical weapons, and that is what starts to worry me. What if, what if, given that America's locked and loaded and that we're prepared to follow and that Macron appears to be taking credit for the whole thing, and I'll hear more from him here in Strasbourg tomorrow. What if there's another chlorine attack? Do we just see endless missile strikes from us against the Assad regime? And if we do, what is that actually achieving? Do we, in an odd way, actually find ourselves almost on the side of ISIS? I hope not. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show exclusively on RBC. The time is now 7.45. Well, maybe Mrs May has done enough to convince you that those missile strikes were the right thing to do and that in doing it, we will end the use of chemical weapons. That's what Donald Trump thought last April when he launched, on behalf of America only, their missile strikes against the regime for the self-same reason. Doesn't seem to be working. I am not convinced that Assad would have done this. He may have done but, I mean, militarily, what a crazy thing to do, given that he's actually winning this civil war big time. And I worry that we may have put ourselves on the wrong side. We do not have a long-term strategy, either for Syria or, frankly, for anywhere in the region. We're being blown around by events. I am not impressed, but I'm told from the Sky Data poll uh, that my position is now, albeit not a... You know, not a huge minority, but, it, but, but you know, I'm now in a minority position. Let's go to Philip in Mildenhall, who's a new caller to the show. Good evening, Philip. 
Hello, good evening. Um, first of all, let, let me plant my um, flag in the, in the sand and say that yep. I do agree entirely with the strikes that took place. Mm-hmm. I also believe that it's entirely reasonable that Assad did drop the chlorine and we were justified in doing so. Now, before I come on to one other point, a major point, we would all love to live our lives by certainties. We don't have that luxury. I wish I was absolutely certain of every decision I took. I take decisions on a balance of probabilities which are right for me and are right for the people around me. There are very few things that are absolutely certain. Now, Mm -hmm. I fully accept accept that intelligence since Iraq has been a dirty word, but I also believe that a huge amount has been learned from that debacle and that no government in its right mind or any other country would lead us down this path if they weren't virtually certain, although they use the word highly unlikely, because they know perfectly well that in due course, if they weren't sure, it would come back and bite their bums. So I'm, I'm totally relaxed that we've done the right thing on the basis of correct intelligence. Now, you made the point okay. earlier... Philip, could I just, just ask you very quickly, just ask yeah, you very sure. quickly, as somebody who's convinced yeah. that, that we've done the right thing, and I, you know, I get yeah. your point about, about you know, <laughs> you, <laughs> difficult to be absolutely certain in life on almost anything. Um, what do you think we'll achieve by this? I think we've sent a strong message that we won't stand by and let these things continue and go ahead. Now, I know you made the point about something didn't make much, much difference, but where do you stop? Let me put a, a question to you. If we had done nothing, mm-hmm. and the mother of one of the children who had been gassed and killed stood in front of you and said, you knew this has happened, why did you do nothing? What would you say? I would say that I feared that intervention would prolong the civil war and that would finish up in many, many, many more children dying. And your case is horrendous and tragic. And the fewer of those we have, the better. But the trouble is, dialogue is impossible with people such as the regime and such as Russia. You can only have so much dialogue. Dialogue has to be backed up with, if necessary, and regrettably I do accept, force it has to be shown to be to happen otherwise everybody would just be you'd have um regimes in afro dropping chlorine bombs all sorts of things would be happening a line in the sand has to be dropped now take your point why don't daesh do that and cause a furore mm. i come to the back to the point I, and i can see exactly what you're saying but i come back to the point that these things are intelligence led and I think intelligence has evolved to such a degree that no country in its right mind, if it had any doubts and thought that Daesh had done it, rather than the Assad regime, would launch missiles on that well, basis. Well, if, Philip, OK, no, I understand what you're saying. If the Prime Minister is privy to intelligence that we're not, why, in the House of Commons, does she only say it is highly likely? It's not very strong, is it? Well... I mean, come on, surely, if you had intelligence, and all right, you don't want to give away your, you know, all of your secrets, but you would presumably, when you're convincing the nation and the Houses of Parliament, you know, the House of Commons anyway, um, about what you'd done, you would use stronger language than that. You might, unless you were scared of somebody saying, OK, you were certain of it, why were you certain of it? OK. And, that then, open, and then that opens you up to disclosing all of the intelligence that you have. Which, 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 which of course she couldn't do. Which, of course, she couldn't do. But, but, but Philip, Philip, one last point. One last point. Yes, go ahead. Yes, Great go. conversation, but one last point. So if there is a chlorine gas attack next Thursday, we strike again, yeah? No, 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 no. We strike only if the intelligence tells us it is hmm. the regime that does it. If it's dying, All right. doing it to try and get us to... to okay. Do, like again, we rely on intelligence, which is... Well, do you know what, Philip? Do you know what, Philip? I do know what, Philip? I, I, that is an absolutely rational position, and I, and, I, and I think that's right. I just was quite nervous when I heard Trump spokesman saying, locked and loaded, ready to go again. Philip, great call. Thank you very much indeed for it. Mark says, I think we should be concentrating on who is selling these weapons to the Assad regime, stopping it at source. Well, the thing is, Mark, actually, the production of chlorine is really pretty 
easy. Um, I've heard the reason Glenn says they use chemical weapons is to get to those hiding underground in basements where conventional weapons can't touch them. Just the thought of that is enough to crack down on their use. They are banned from use for a reason. I'm shocked by how much support there is for Assad and Russia. Glenn, you know, I, I'm not supporting Assad, uh, but I do think, I really do think, that if we sort of say, oh, is Assad worse than the rebels and ISIS? Let, let's stop this game of trying to pick who the good guys and who the bad guys are in countries like Syria. It's just, frankly, impossible. What does Jordan from Brixton think? Good evening. Evening, Nigel. I think this is one of the rare occasions where I'm going to agree with you. I'm completely uncomfortable with the military intervention in Syria by the UK. I think we're here again sort of knocking at the door of increasing military intervention in the Middle East with, you know, the powers that be trying to convince the public of, you know, constant state use of uh, WMDs. And I think that if the sky poll is correct, all I think that indicates is that we haven't really learned the lessons from Iraq, from Afghanistan, from, mm. you know, most recently Libya. I feel like whenever we get our way with these sort of uh, movements for regime change, all that we get from it is years of instability afterwards and a huge tax bill. You know, Could it be, Jordan, could it be, Jordan, that the reason for that swing in the poll is that if you looked at the newspapers yesterday, for argument's sake, you know, I read all the leader columns of the newspapers yesterday, some were very openly supportive of what the Prime Minister had done, and those that criticised... They, they criticise procedure. They criticise not going to Parliament. And even Jeremy Corbyn, if you look at him today, you know, Corbyn is saying we need new legislation, we shouldn't be America's poodle. But Corbyn didn't completely outright condemn what we'd done. So maybe, Jordan, one of the reasons that people's opinions have shifted towards it being the right thing is they're not actually getting much of a counter-argument. Well, I think they're spending too much time looking in the wrong places. You know, the sun and the Daily Mail don't have any important or any pertinent information to give the British public about this type of scenario. If you look at Libya, Libya is currently like a jihadi Chesington, you know, and we've just got <laughs> finished with Liz Libya a few years ago. And yeah. now that's a situation that's been brushed under the carpet completely. We're not talking about the brilliance of Western powers when it comes to intervening in Libya, mm, because that mm. was clearly cl wrong. It was oh, and, and, and Jordan, idea. Jordan, our track record, you and I are at one on this, our track record has been abysmal. But how do people like you and I are, answer the question when we're asked, what are we going to do about the use of chemical weapons? Well, do you know what we, what we need to do is let the OPCW get in there and do what they're paid to do and figure out exactly where the chemical weapons came from and who used the chemical weapons because uh, Assad, Assad's regime is surrounded by terrorists, you know, we've seen it for years and it's only since the, uh, uh, the, the Russian intervention started that we stopped seeing things like beheading videos on our, on our televisions and uh, widespread ISIS propaganda and uh, ISIS taking terrorists taking uh, uh, Syrian sovereign land over over in the Middle East. So I think that all happened. All of the good stuff inside inside of Syria that's happened in the last few years has happened without us. We just need to step back from this mm. one and let uh, uh, the OPCW get in there and investigate. Okay, well, and they and they may come. They may come to a conclusion. That, of course, in the case of Salisbury, they didn't. That they said it was Novichok, or they said it was a Russian-based uh, chemical, but they couldn't prove, you know, where it even been made. Jordan, I thank you very much. Abby says, Nigel, for the first time ever, I agree with every single point you've made in this program regarding the pointless bombing of Syria at the weekend. Abby, keep listening. You never know. You may agree again one day. You've been listening to the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. I'm back tomorrow night at seven. At ten tonight, it's Ian Collins. But up next, it's Clive Bull. Nigel, thank you.